really kind of grosses you out, but like that's also kind of why you keep reading. Essentially 150 pages of emotional manipulation. Hello my darlings. This should be the Halloween vlog. I am gonna give a reading update for Sign Here, which is the book that I was reading in my last vlog. I think I already put up a review, a little mini review on Instagram. Um, I didn't quite finish it in my last vlog and ideally I would have given a proper update before I signed off, but I just didn't didn't quite finish it and wanted to give like a proper little review. I gave it three and a half stars. It fell a little bit flat for me. I think in concept, love it. The idea of a guy working in hell, his whole thing is to try to take over people, like convince people, give them some sort of deal that they can't pass up. Um, and so he secures their soul for hell. It's a really fun concept. It reminded me of in the beginning when he was sort of, there was a little bit of exposition at the beginning, it kind of explaining like, okay, this is how it works. I loved that part and it reminded me of Fight Club. In the film, Edward Norton does a really good job of making it seem like the corporate world and corporate life truly is kind of like hell. I kind of heard Peyote's um, voice in my head, kind of like Edward Norton's, just that very monotone, dead, almost zombified kind of tone of voice. And so I'm gonna explain while I make dinner because I'm actually really hungry, I just got home. So I really did like um, his voice and just the concept. Ultimately though, I did feel like it was lacking a little bit. I felt like it just could have been, I don't know, it kind of devolved into just like a normal family drama and sort of like going back and, and kind of getting um, these slow reveals of like how certain characters were related to one another or different secrets that they've had. And I just felt like we moved away a little bit from the point. It wasn't spooky at all, so it's not gonna be a good Halloween read. I don't know, that was just not what I was expecting. I think I was expecting a little bit more. It just was a little underwhelming. Three and a half stars out of five. My next read is going to be Grady Hendrix. So I'm hoping because it literally has haunted house in the title, um, that it's gonna be a little bit spookier, um, I would imagine. I mean, Grady Hendrix is great in the sense that he's very like campy. Today's like the 26th, I think, of October. So that's gonna be my actual like Halloween night read. And then I'm gonna try to squeeze in Diary of an Oxygen Thief. I'll update you guys later after I make dinner and we can see how they go. four pages in. I've done a little bit of reading. I started it yesterday, I think, um, and did a little bit of reading last night. I'm really liking it so far. Um, I think I'm already liking it a lot more than I liked Sign Here. It's very different. Um, it is a lot darker just in the sense of the character, our main character, um, who I don't even know if we have a name for yet, if I'm being totally honest, unless I've just missed his name. Um, but he is really the textbook definition of a misogynist. So it's been <laughs> it's been really dark. It's been interesting, but it's been really dark so far. Um, and I think I like it enough, like the prose style already, to go ahead and probably thrift a copy of the sequel, Chameleon in a Candy Store. So I think I'm probably gonna go ahead and thrift that because these are so short. I assume the second one's probably pretty short as well. Um, it's only 150 pages, so 
If the second one is just as thin, it won't take me very long. I am enjoying it, but it's like the kind of enjoyment that you get from a book that's kind of twisted, like reading something like Lolita. Like it's it's gross, it really kind of grosses you out, but like that's also kind of why you keep reading. This is kind of doing the same thing, like the narrator is very, very messed up and not, not well. He's very much like an emotional manipulator, like gaslighting type of individual, but you kind of feel like you're watching a train wreck or you're watching <laughs> a train that is, that you know is like bound to derail. Um, and so it's it's definitely keeping me reading, even though it's like, he's so horrible, he's so not a likable narrator. But I've really been enjoying the prose style. It, it's very, like, colloquial, and it feels very much like, very casual, like if you were just sitting down with a buddy and, you know, talking. It's just like, he is not afraid to just tell you exactly how he feels about women, and it's not great. I'm gonna get to reading this, um, and hopefully I continue liking it, so we'll see. Alright, time for a quick little reading update. So, I am nearly finished with Diary of an Oxygen Thief by Anonymous. It did take us a while to get to the woman that is referenced um, in, in the blurb. Definitely Lolita vibes, that is for sure. I think it, it took us about halfway to get to her, like to the referencing of her, or for at least to like pick up and start to get serious and for us to see some interaction between them. So it was moving a, like maybe a little bit slowly there at the beginning, but I literally have like four or five pages left, but I just got the call that my grocery pickup is ready. So I'm gonna go get myself some groceries. I'm gonna go run through the line and pick those up. And then as soon as I come back, I'm gonna finish. And then I will give you guys a little update um, or like a little mini review of what I thought. Okay, 
you literally just watched me finish <laughs> this book. I should probably give um, my mind a little bit of time to actually stew on what I just read instead of immediately jumping into a little review. So I loved this. He even references, he kind of breaks the fourth wall a little bit, the narrator. Um, and he even references the sequel at the end in the final paragraph. He's kind of saying like, if you're reading this, it means, you know, my story was published and I'm probably working on the screenplay or my, or, or the sequel. So it's funny that I literally just ordered the sequel earlier. So that tells you how much I liked it before I even finished the first one. I had already ordered the second one. There's just something about it. And I know I already mentioned this earlier when I was talking about like the prose style and the voice of the narrator, but it's rare, I find, that you get a narrator who is so just down and dirty and scummy um, and weirdly proud of it. And I don't know, there's something really like weirdly refreshing about that. I think it's, you're supposed to feel like that though. Like it's kind of like, um, is it Humbert? Is that his name? The guy in Lolita. You have such weird mixed feelings for him because on one hand you understand you know what it's like to be in love and the the love that he has for lolita is so seemingly sincere and in his mind very beautiful but then in reality like you're so disgusted and gross and you understand that you know he's in a relationship with a literal child and so it's very weird and disturbing and it makes you feel icky but then you know at the same time because we're we're seeing the world through his eyes we sort of get a little bit of that beauty in it and purity that he sees it's just one of those it's one of those books that it makes you feel a certain way and i think that is the thing that has been lacking from from books that i don't give a great rating um, I think that's the thing that's lacking is it making me feel some kind of way even if that way is like kind of grossed out I have to have that I have to have some sort of feeling towards it like I have to have some sort of emotion right like that's kind of the whole point is to like kind of see the world from their perspective so that is what this book did even though it was kind of gross at times um, it's not graphic or anything well it is for adults I will say that um, it's not super graphic but um, there are definitely some, there's some scenes in there that are, that are not for kids, that's for sure. Um, so I do recommend these. I don't quite know if it's a five out of five. Might need to think about that for a minute. I'll be, I'll be really interested to see, like, if the story picks up exactly where it left off, you know, how it's different, how it's similar. I think if you like a story that has really flawed, real human characters who um, like to emotionally manipulate one another, then you will like this book because that's basically what it was. It was essentially 150 pages of emotional manipulation. So there you go. <laughs> now I can finally move on to my Grady Hendrix. So for November, we will pick up with, or we'll start with If We Were Villains, and then Daughter from the Dark. So those will be the first two reads for November. All right, Guillermo. What do you think about this one? Guillermo, it's very cold out there. I don't think you know how cold it is. Yeah, go ahead. Good morning, everyone. It is absolutely freezing outside. I did a little bit of reading last night. I got to chapter four, so I've read 30 pages. I'm gonna try to literally just read all day, as much as I possibly can. 
I'm going to stay inside and stay cozy. You can probably hear the heater on. I finally had to turn it on for the first time. Um, so anyway, let's get to reading. Alrighty guys, it is time for a little reading update. I just took the dust jacket off. Whenever I'm reading a hardcover, I, when I'm actually reading it, I have to take it off. Um, but I couldn't wait for this to come out in paperback. I really wanted to read it this year um, because I think I will have read almost all of his fiction by the time I finish this. I do have Bad Astronauts over on the shelf, I think. Um, I purchased it at the same time that I was buying this, so I guess I could read that next. Um, and then I would have all of his fiction completed. There's a couple of nonfiction things I don't know that I'm super interested in reading. I'm about 100 pages in. I figured I would do like a 100 page update. And I'm about this far in, so not too bad. Um, it's going pretty well. We're moving towards something. There's a lot of things being like hinted at that I feel like are very obvious and I'm kind of like ready for them to happen. Like I'm kind of ready for us to see those things unfold. Like there's a lot about dolls in here. Um, the main character Louise um, and her brother Mark, their parents have just passed away and so they've been left with this house that we assume um, is haunted in some way because haunted house is literally in the title. And there are lots of dolls. Their mom was a big fan of like puppetry so there's lots of puppets and weird like taxidermy art crafts and things. Um, so we are basically trying to figure out exactly what's going on. Um, and there's a lot of hints at like, you know, the dolls are watching them and that kind of thing. So kind of like a scary toy story. It's kind of the vibe that I'm getting so far. Like the TV will randomly flick on, but there's nobody in the room except the dolls, like that kind of thing. Um, so it's a little, it's a little creepy, which I like because I was hoping to read at least one book that was going to be um, a little bit, a little bit spooky this Halloween. So right now it's mainly um, like sibling rivalry type stuff. Louise and Mark do not get along at all. Lots of tension between them. So if you like that sort of sibling rivalry kind of thing um, in a book, then you'll like this because we've had about a hundred pages of that so far. So I am ready to see what else happens um, and I will update you the next time. Hopefully we get like some spooky things happening and so I'll update you whenever those things happen. So slight change of plan. I am actually gonna head over to my parents. Mom invited me over to watch um, the second season of A Discovery of Witches, which we thoroughly enjoyed the first season of um, and then completely forgot about it. I think because we were finishing The Walking Dead. They've gone back in time. I don't remember a lot from the first season other than just Diana like learning her powers, like learning that she had powers. If I time everything right, I can finish it by Halloween night. Okay, I told you that I would do another update as soon as like creepy things started to happen. Um, I have just absolutely smashed my dinner. It was delicious. Um, I am on page 188, um, so I'm about halfway through now, actually. Things are finally, like really creepy things, um, are finally starting to happen. It has taken a while. I mean, I'm nearly 200 pages in, like halfway in. So we're getting a little bit of a slow start. I think I do this thing with Grady Hendrix where um, I kind of build him up in my head and then when I'm actually reading, I'm like really like ready for things to kind of ramp up and things to kind of get moving a little bit faster. Like I want, I want the action, like give us the action. That's what he's good at. He's good at the little twists and turns. There's a flashback that just happened um, when Louise was like, I don't remember, I don't know if it said how old she was, four or five, um, and her brother is two, and they're out on a frozen pond, and the puppet is like, 
an evil puppet. Things are happening and I'm excited to probably just spend the rest of the night reading. I got like halfway through that book and I D <laughs> DDT. That's a DDT. that's a wrestling pro wrestling. <laughs> I, I DTF. What did you mean to say? I DNF'd. There you go.